Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Bless your name, 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 Lord God. Just bless the name of the Lord God Almighty. Bless your name, Father God. We just thank God for this day. We bless his name. We magnify his name. We just give him the honor. We give him the praise. We come before his presence with thanksgiving in our heart. And we loose all that weights and we loose yesterday and forgetting those things in the past. And we come into this day worshiping and glorifying God and honoring him for being God. We just thank God right now and magnify him right now. We just lift up his name. We lift up his name in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. We come before you just thanking you for being God. We come before you, oh God, bringing all our burdens, all of our headaches, all of our issues, Lord God. And we give them unto you right now, Father, that you, Lord God, will take us to higher heights and deeper depths. We thank you for this day. We glorify you right now. And we just lift your name up on high. And we give you all the praise and all the honor. For it is in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. We give God not some of the praise, but all the praise, all the honor, all the glory. For he's worthy. He is a worthy God. He is a worthy God. He is a worthy, worthy, worthy God. We thank God for this day. We thank God for all those that are tuning in and, and all those that are part of this service. We just thank God for being God. There is no God like our God, Jehovah. There is no God like our God, Jehovah. I don't care what people say. When you go and look, there is no God like our God, Jehovah. He is a true one and only living God. And he is more than enough. More than enough. More than enough. God has more than we will ever need in this life and in the life to come. That our God is sufficient. Our God is able. He is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or we think. We just give him all honor and all praise and all glory because he is worthy of all of the praise. We just, Last week, I was talking about you can do it. And we're going to continue that this week, that you can do it, that you can do it. We, we started with the um, scripture. <clears throat> and we're going to reread the, the, the main scripture, the theme scripture, Philippians, the fourth chapter, the 10th through the 13th verse. Philippians, the fourth chapter, 10 through the 13th verse. I'm just so excited about what God is doing. Amen. What God is doing in the midst of all man doing what man think they should do and, and big enough to do. God is still carrying out his plan. God is still carrying out his plan to do just as he pleases. Philippians, the fourth chapter, 10 through the 13th verse reads, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regards to need, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am to be content. Learn that whatsoever state I am to be content. Contentment means I'm trusting God. Yeah. Contentment doesn't mean I like where I'm at, but it means I'm trusting God and not moving and jumping and doing things and, and that I shouldn't to try to get out of the situation, but trusting God in it and through it and knowing that he's going to bring me on the other side of it. I know how to be a base and I know how to abound. I know how to be, as they say, somebody know how to be nobody. Know how to dress up and go to a bed, but they know how to also throw some clothes and go work out in the yard. Know how, how to do both and, 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 and still know who I am. Not trying to put on airs, but trusting where you're at in God. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. And that, that, that's a, the main scripture. We want to just reiterate the fact that you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. So no matter what other, other scriptures and what we talk about, this covers it all that you can do all things through Christ. You can bear what you have to bear. You can go through what you have to go through. You can be who God called you to be through Christ. You can stand up and be the man of God, the woman of God that Christ has called you to be. You can give God the honor, give God the glory. You cannot be embarrassed about being a Christian. 
because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. We want to go to Isaiah, the 40th, 40th chapter, starting on the lesson today. Isaiah, the 40th chapter, in the 27th verse. Isaiah, the 40th chapter, and again, beginning at the 27th verse. Isaiah 40, 27 through 31, and it reads, Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my just claim is passed over by my God. Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth? Neither faints nor is weary. Neither faints nor is weary. God does not faint and God does not get weary. Just because we get weary and things seem like out of control sometimes and oh my God, what we're going to do in the country is this and the country is that and people like them this way and people like them that way. God is still just as calm, collective and cool. Because if he's in charge of everything and know the end before the beginning, why would he be riled, get riled up? Sometimes even with us, we think, oh, my God, God, you know, because we mess up. We go through all these changes as if God did not know. God knows you. And that's why we're able to, 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 to know that we can do it, because in spite of God knowing you, he called you to do some things. In spite of God knowing you, the, the Bible said that he died for us while we was in sin. Had no, we had no plans on come, on doing any better. That's when he died for us. So if he died for us when we was in that bad of shape, surely he had some plans for us later on down the road. So God know what you can do because he made you know where you're at. But the creator of the ends of the earth, our God, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. His understanding is unsearchable. God is past finding out. Uh, we, we know a little, and, and I repeat what I tell people with me, and meaning that after being saved 35, 30 some years, the biggest thing I've learned is that I know very little. Because every anytime as you keep learning, it just makes show you how bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger God is. He gives power to the weak. He gives power to the weak. That's why I'm saying you can do it. He gives power to the weak, no matter what somebody else telling you. The word says he gives power to the weak. He gives power to those that are weak. How do you think you've made it through all that you've gone through? If God didn't give you the power to make it through it, you may have been laying in your bed crying, but he still allowed you to endure. Still allowed you to endure. He gives power to the weak. So if he gives power to you when you're at your weakest, what about when you're doing okay? What about when you're built up in Christ and the power he adds then? That's why we get away to do exceedingly and abundantly because God gives us power. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Now here we are, he gives power and he gives strength. You can do it. You can do it. See, we're going to go into some things that's a little heavy a little, a little later on. And I want you to know that God gives you power. Because some, some areas we are weak, but God gives us power. Some things in life have been hurtful. And we're like to say we're going to talk about it a little later. Some things in life have been crushing. It's been crushing and you've been held in bondage. You've been held captive by some things that happen in your life. But God gives you power to overcome. You can do it. You can do it. You can come out of the cage. You can come out of the dungeon of depression and sadness and weariness and loneliness. Because of things that have happened that cage you up and you never trust anybody anymore. You can come out of it. You can, you can, you can do it. You can do it because he gives power to the weak. And to those that have no might, he increases strength. Sometimes we just need to say, God, allow me to feel and know the strength and power that you're giving me. To those that have no might, he increases strength. 
Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. That's the in ourselves. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. There's a renewing. And the, the fact of it is, there's a renewing and a renewing and a renewing. As we go through life, that's why sometimes you, 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 things are going well and, and you feel so spiritually strong and life is so good and you think it's going to last forever. No, something else is going to come around the corner. But it lets us know that because God is with us and because he strengthens us and because he gives us power, that he will renew it. He will renew it. That's the same as sometimes when there's altar call. And some people, because they've been saved, they don't come to the altar. I don't want people to see me coming up here. I've been saved for 20 years. Oh, and life is still happening. Life's still happening. You done lost a loved one. You've been crushed. Your faith has been tested. Sometimes you become, you're doubting whether God, it, it, your relationship with God, and, and, and you need to be renewed. We need to be renewed. That's some people issue right now. They just need to be renewed. But thinking that, no, I'm saved, so I don't need to go back to God. No, we have to keep going back. You don't go to the gas station one time, and then that's it. You don't go to the table one time, and that's it. And during the pandemic, we've done a lot of going to the table. People working from home so they can eat lunch. Go to the refrigerator on break time. <laughs> Already right, half prepared dinner by the time you get off from work. We've been doing some eating, but it means that just as we have to continue to feed the body and continue to feed the mind, we have to continue to feed the spirit. The renewal, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength, shall renew their strength. If, 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 if you didn't have to, renew, if, if, the renewal part, just stressing that a little more, that it's okay that you need to be renewed. But the issue is get renewed. Don't let what people think and, and what people say. If you don't fail, fail down, you don't fail. We read the Bible of God's sin to come short of the glory of God. We, we, we need to repent. We think wrong sometimes. All of us need to be repenting daily. Daily. We need to be renewed daily. Every day we get up, we have to choose Christ. And every day we get up, we have to renew our mind that I'm going to follow Christ today. I'm going to do what's right today shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall mount up like wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. Now, when I'm saying you can do it, because see, here's the thing of it is, to have an army, and we say with the army of God, to have an army that's too scared to go out to battle is not an army at all. We all have gone through some things in life and been hurt and been crushed, we can't go do all God would have for us to do until we realize that we can move beyond where we're at. That we can move beyond where we're at. They shall mount up with wings and, and like eagles. And, and, and the fact that we're talking about you can do it, many of us and many people, it's in you to fly, but you won't fly. It's in you. It's in you. You're irritated and, and you're frustrated sometimes with life because you're trying to stay down when you know it's in you to fly. Yes, your wing was broken uh, 10 years ago, but it's, it's healed now. Yes, some of the feathers got pulled out along the way, but they've grown back right now. You can fly, but you have to know you can do it. You've got to have the confidence that you can do it. No matter what everybody else is saying, you've got to have the confidence within yourself that the God I serve, the God I, God I live for, will allow me to soar like an eagle because that's what he made me to be. Mount up on wings as eagles. Too many of us sitting down and, and we may stand up a little and we go out and hang out in the barn yard with the chickens, but we won't allow ourselves to go ahead and fly because we don't believe we can do it. Many leaders are sitting down because they don't believe they can lead. Leadership is not being perfect, but it's having the boldness and the strength and the courage to let God lead you. And if you make a mistake, apologize. Apologize to God. Apologize to people. But know that I can do it. I can do what God has placed in me. I don't have to live my whole life being down or being less than what God called me to be. 
I don't have to be scared and scared and scared and scared. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. God wants some people to stand up and do what he would have them to do. And we need to know that it's time out for looking over the fence at everybody else and look in the mirror and say, I can do it. I can do it. And it goes deeper than that. You, 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 you know, and, and, and I don't say that meaning I can do it no matter what. No, I can do it meaning I can change and allow God to change some things in my life that need to be changed so that I can do it. I can lay down some things. Like we read the scripture, lay aside the sin, the weight and the sin that so easily beset us that we can run this race. Many of us have sat on the sideline because we've allowed so much to accumulate upon us until we can't run anymore. Weight it down with issues, weight it down with doubt, weight it down with worry, weight it down with so many things that's in the, that, that's natural we're weighted down with, and then weight it down with sin. Sin is a killer. You know, they say high blood pressure is a killer. Sin is a killer. And many times in life, we're, we are captured by sin. But you can do it. You can overcome it. You can come out of it. You can move forward. You can do it. You can do it. God ain't locked you in. The Bible said that he came that we might have life and life more abundantly. He came to set us free. Don't stay bound up all your life when God died to set you free. You can do it. The door is already unlocked. The door is already unlocked. Christ died for it. We celebrate Easter because he, he died and was resurrected. The Bible said when he got up, he, 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 he went down to hell and took the keys to death, hell, and the grave. What's got you bound up? What's got you locked up? If he took the keys to everything, then and that means he, 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 he did it so that we could be free. The grave can't even hold us. The grave couldn't hold him. So what's holding you? What's holding you? What's got you bound up? You can do it. You can overcome it. And we're going to go into a, 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 a few things. But, but, but you, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You know, it, it, you, you think about um, it, it, you know, we look at our issues and things we face. I've got one more scripture we want to go to. But before that, just like Paul and Jonah had to ride out the storm, you can do it. The, 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 the storms and the situations in our life, you can make it through it. Even if it seems like you've been swallowed up by the situation, been swallowed up by what you got into. Stop listening at people talking about you will never change. Stop listening at people just talking about how bad you are. That's not changing anything. God came that you might have life. God came and Jesus died. There was, no, there was nothing else that could pay the price. Jesus died so that nothing could hold you captive. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to God to be the best you can be. To allow God to do all he want to do through your life. But just like Paul and Jonah, you can ride out the storms. Whatever the storm is in your life, you can ride it out. Whatever the situation in life, you can ride it out. Even if it means crying out from within the situation. If it has surrounded you, you can still cry out. Jonah couldn't see no daylight, but he still cried out. You can still cry out. You can still know that you can do it. I can go beyond this. I can make it out of this situation. Just hold on, hold out, trust God. You can do it. If Moses could face Pharaoh, you can face your situation. If Moses could face Pharaoh, you can face your situation. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. it, 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 it it's time that the Bible talks about this, girding up your loins and putting on this and putting on that, the helmet of salvation. And, and, and meaning you can do it. Take what you need, the proper tools, and know that you can do it. Here it is like this. You don't go out to cut the grass with scissors. You take a lawnmower. It's taking the proper tools and you can do it. The issue right now, and I want everybody to hear me good, the, 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 the main thing with what I'm talking about in life is getting Christ in your life so you can do what needs to be done with your life. 
getting Christ in your life so you can do what needs to be done with your life. And then even after you have Christ in your life, is keeping that relationship with God so that no matter what comes up, you know I can do it. This too shall pass no matter what it might be. Because if Moses can face Pharaoh, you can face whatever comes up your way, knowing that it's still going to be okay. If Abraham could lead his people and go do what God would have him to do, you can do the same, not just leaving your people. But like I said last week about sometimes we have to come out from among them. Sometimes we have to separate yourself because people are dragging you down. Yeah, they, yeah, there's family members sometimes, but they're dragging you down. Yes, it's friends, but they're dragging you down. You all talk and everything is fine and wonderful until you start talking about your plans to do better. And then somebody have something to say about everything and how it won't work and, and, and how you, you're not the one for that and you're not good enough for it and, and go on and on and on reasons why you should never move from where you're at. Stay right where you're at, but you know God is unctioning you that he have more for you in your life. You know your parents and taught you to do better than what you're doing. You know your grandparents have sacrificed too much for you to be standing and holding back. You can do it. You can move forward and do what God would have for you to do. You can overcome what you need to overcome to be all that God would have for you to be to be you can do it you can do it you can do it I, I was sitting there thinking how even when it comes to church folks and religious folks we can do it yeah. and, and here's what I mean most of us can look back sometime in church and, and realize and, and, and look at stuff that bothered us or that we didn't get nothing from and we can do it so that we end up moving the church forward where it's not about just the same old same old the same old same we're about looking at each other critiquing each other putting each other down and all kind of nonsense we can do it where we become the church god would have us to be so that the, the bible the churches in the bible say they didn't lack nothing i can encourage you i can help you but here's the thing of it is we've got to make sure we're willing to do what god say do because many times we do what god say do to it until we get to a point where it's something we don't like and then we do what we want to do and then things shake up a little and we get back to what God say to you and what we think. God ain't never asked us, about that. I want you to go do what you think. Many times when it comes to being as far as Christian, the Christian, Christendom rather, the issue is, is because it's not comfortable all the time. Because the Bible says to love your enemies. And sometimes your enemies ain't always outside the church. Amen. But he said, love your enemies. Do good to those who despitefully use you. The realness of it. And I will always, because that's what God called me to do, push love. Because no matter what you come to me at, if it ain't based in love and you ain't walking in love, then I don't care much to hear it. Because the Bible talks about those that, that cast out demons and did all kind of stuff, but they had, didn't have love, so they didn't go anywhere. I don't want to miss heaven because I was doing things, but not loving the way I should love. For we celebrate and talk about Easter because God loved us enough that he gave his son. And we need to love each other enough that I can give you some time, give you some patience, give you some understanding. You can do it. And that's not always easy. And, and, and hear me good. That doesn't mean be somebody do boy, or do girl or do whatever somebody wants you to do. But I can tell you no and still love you. I can be around you and love on you and not just preach to you all the time. I can give you the right to make your choice. Even if it's not the choice I would make. You can do it. You can do it. Now let's get on into it. This is a, a, a little, little meteor in, in here going into some things. Nehemiah. We're not going to actually turn to that when you have time read because it's, it's Nehemiah chapters 2 through 7. And I know you don't have time to, 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 to read all of that today. But Nehemiah like Nehemiah and those working with him, with God on their side, and like I said, we have time to read it. They rebuilt the wall of Jerusalem. They rebuilt the wall of Jerusalem. Nehemiah, and, and it is it, the scripture talks about how he wouldn't come down. They wanted him to stop, and people, his friends heard about him, or not his friends, but his enemies heard about him, him, him building the wall, and they picked at him and criticized him and talked about how the wall was nothing, and it was so flimsy, a fox would get on it, and the wall would fall, and, all, and but as they kept building, then they got mad at him, got mad at them rebuilding the wall, and, 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 and so now it, it's 
they, they rebuilt something that was broken down. And I want you to hear me good with this. They rebuilt something that was broken down because it was needed. And there was no protection without the wall. And I'm going to preach you later, sometime later and go even more in depth on this because it's even more. But what I want us to look at today is talk about you can do it. You can do it. <clears throat> they rebuilt that wall no matter what people said because it was needed. And I'm talking about the fact that you can do it. When I look at this, I want everybody to look at themselves individually. Look at yourself, your situation, and know that you can do it. The walls with, in Nehemiah's time, they had been broken down. The Bible said burned, beaten down, or crushed down. That, that the walls had been destroyed, had, 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 had been you know, demolished. Now, everybody need to look at themselves. Here, here and follow me. Here and follow me, because this is... I don't have much more after this. But they, the walls were broken down and they rebuilt the walls and replaced the gates. And here's what I want everybody to do. Look at themselves and the fact you can do it. In life right now, there's many people that's listening to me and know people that the issues in their life are back years ago. And I tell the church all the time, many adults, the issues they suffer from is from something that went on when they were childhood. And I want you to know that you can do it. You can rebuild the walls through God of what's been taken from you and broken down. Many people are dealing with, dealt with molestation when they were younger. And those walls have been, things have been crushed in your life. There's no confidence. There's no, there's so many issues that came along with it. People that may have been abused and people that were raped and, and, and and people that have now been suffering from depression and, and can't have relationships. And I want you to know that you can do it. You can have your life back. You can have your life back. You can have your confidence back. You can have your love back. You can, you can have it back. You can have your sanity back. But you, you, you can do it, but it, it means you may have to rebuild the wall. And like I said, I'm going to teach on that sometime later because it's so much in, in depth. But I want you to know that you can do it. That you can do it. You can overcome that. You can not let that hold you down and in fear your whole life. You can do it. So that you have a better relationship with your daughter, with your son. You, you can do that. You've had a bad marriage and, 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 and now you're so scared or you're so skeptical and, and you're feeling so hurt. And, and many times people get depressed and their life change forever. But I want you to know that you can do it. You can overcome that. Just like a turtle. You can stick your head back out of the shell. If you follow a turtle, he stick his head in. But after enough time and he sat there he slowly checked out the surroundings and, and, and stick his head back out to see what's going on and then he carries on with, with moving on back to the water or whatever i want you to know that your life doesn't have to stay where it's at please hear me good because there's a lot of people that are hurting over situations from their past, the way they've been treated, like I said, molestation, molestation or rape or had an abortion or, or, or bad choices in life or, or, or things that happened that you did wrong. And, and you may not have gotten caught with it, but it has bothered you for, uh, from that time on. And I want you to know you can do it. I don't care. You know you better than anybody else. And some places you've been in life, some places we have been in life, we're embarrassed about it and we're hurt about it. It. But I want you to know that you can do it. You can come beyond that. You can see a brighter day. You can let go of that so that the real, the, the real you can come back out. You've been held captive too long. You've been held captive too long. Your life has been stagnated too long. You can do it. You can step out from where you're at. You can step out to be the person God would have for you to be. You can step back out and have some joy and some peace. You can step back out so you're not all the time walking around in fear. I don't care what happens happen. You can step beyond that fear to realize that life is still good because God is good. That you can do it. Come on, trust me. You can do it. Even if it's been abuse, you can do it. 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 You failed as a parent. You, you didn't do what you need to do. Your mind was in a different place. And now you're still carrying around that over you and feeling guilty and feeling sad because that life didn't turn out the way it could have. But you can move beyond that. You can't go back and redo the past. So the fact that it is, you have to look at it. I can't go back, but what I can do is move ahead beyond the pain. Move ahead beyond the guilt. Move ahead beyond the hurt. Move ahead beyond the feeling embarrassed and down and out. That I can move ahead of that because that's not who I am. That's who I was. You can do it. You can do it. You were only a child when that happened. 
You can, if you don't, don't you, you, you can move beyond that. God can do it. God can do it. God can allow you, and he can do it through you. He can allow you to move beyond that. You can do it. Trust me, you can do it. You can do it. Many, like I said earlier, listen to me. And, and, and inside of you is bubbling right now. Inside of you is straining right now. Because you're saying, that's me, that's me, that's me. There's a me inside of me that's trying to get out. There's a me inside of me that's saying, there's more. I can do more. I want more. I want the true joy that other people talk about. I'm looking at everybody else. I'm on Facebook looking at all the perfect marriages, the perfect families, the perfect relationships, the perfect vacations, the perfect everything. And it's not of it is me. You can have peace in your life. You can break free from where you've been held captive and allow God to take you to that place. Take you that to that place. But Paul said, wherever I man, I've been there, there with content. That I'm content in God and life is okay. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. It has held you captive too long. You've been hurt too long. You done fretted over it too long. You done cried over it too long. It, it, it's been 20 years. I'm not minimizing it. But I'm saying this, that you've got to stand up and face it and go to the door and walk out. That ain't no physical door. That's a, that's a mental and a spiritual door. You've got to walk out. You've got to walk out. You've got to let, you've got to let yourself know that it's okay. It's okay for me to leave this place that I've been in. It's okay for me to leave this hurt behind. It has hurt me 20 years, 30 years, 10 years, 5 years, whatever. It has hurt me long enough that it's okay that if I walk on out of this place, I walk on out of this place of depression. It's okay for me to laugh. It's okay for me to smile. I made mistakes, but that's that I can't undo it. But, so I, I have to choose. Have to choose. To move forward and you can do it. God can do more through you and in you and in your life than you even realize. You're no worse than anybody else. Stop doubting yourself and putting yourself down. Stop critiquing yourself all the time. Critique yourself through God's eyes. When God saw you, he said you're wonderfully and fearfully made. When God saw you, he said it's made in my image that I'm still wanting to do some things through you, in you and for you. You can do it. You can do it. And when you do it, don't let people put you back there. Don't let people put, keep putting you back in the cage they want you in. Of depression, despair, down and out. Coming to church and praying and praying and praying and still not believing your worth. Your worth, believing you're still not believing your worth a better life. Spiritually, mentally. Because see, the thing of it is, the spiritual and the mental cages is worse than the physical cages. It's worse than the physical cages. Many people are walking around bound up. Some have been in church. That's why I say we can do it. I'm telling you right now, I don't want just no church as usual. Life is real. People are hurting. People are going through. People are dealing with stuff. And many times we're running our mouths about stuff, not knowing that we're right beside somebody who's caged up in pain. Caged up in worration. Dealing with eagles and sometimes we're helping and clip their wings. Sometimes we're helping trying to make them be a chicken when they're trying to fly. I may not get it right the first time, may stumble. They stumble around a little, but I'm going to still keep spreading my wings. Keep spreading my wings and having confidence Having confidence in God. Having confidence in God that you can do it. That you can do it. And, and go back to the, 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 the two things. The Bible said that we're the part of, he's the part and we're the clay. So lean on that when, when you feel like you let yourself down or something happened. And I'm still, I'm clay. The part is still working on me. And then the songwriter said, please be patient with me. God is not done with me yet. But many times... We sat down on the sideline many times. We've allowed the door to close in and close in and close in. And now sometimes we've been closed in for 30 years. We're around people and we go through the motion. But what I'm going after is that real you, that real you down in there, that real you that God made in his image that wants joy, peace, love and happiness. You can 
do it. You can do it. Greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. You can do it. You can do it. Don't think you're the only one that's been mistreated in life. Don't think you're the only one that's been molested in life. Don't think you're the only one that was raped in life. Don't think you're the only one that's gone through some, some hell of situ hell of fire situation in life. You're not the only one. That doesn't make it any easier. I'm not saying that to minimize it. But I'm saying this, that you can overcome it. That you cannot just stay with where the enemy have you thinking that you're bad and you're fault and you don't deserve anything. You can come out of that and enjoy the rest of your life. There's a little saying we have here somewhere around. I put that the, the, the rest of my life is, is going to be the best of my life. And I challenge you now to make the rest of your life to be the best of your life. The rest of your life to be the best of your life. You can do it. You can do it. I, I, I'm, I love to laugh and clown and joke. And what I've come with, resided within myself is that's who I am. And I'm fine with that. I don't have to act dignified all the time and this and that. It, 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 I can have fun. I can. I love to make people laugh. And the fact of it is, I can do that and still preach. I can do that and still love God. I can enjoy life and still love God. And we're all challenged with the that with, with dealing with the challenges of life and still being able to enjoy life. You can do it. You can do it. Loved ones have passed away. Life's been hard. Life's been heavy. But the sun is still shining. And it doesn't mean that we forget about anybody and, and overnight things just change. But it means we have to know that we can do it. I'm going to overcome this. I'm going to smile again. I'm going to love again. I'm going to help people again. That I'm going to move forward. And you can do it. You can do it. Through God and the help of God, you can do it. Know that you can do it. Know that you can do it. You can be that happy person. You can be that spirit filled person. You can be that Christian person. You can be that confident, that person with confidence. You don't have to just walk in fear. You can do it. Don't be fear of scared of commitment to some of you. Don't just fear commitment. I, I, I'll say this and, and then move on. I, I, I think about my, my father had a home built. Um, I think I maybe was in the maybe the 12th grade, but he had a home built. And afterwards, I heard him say this. Because we had lived in, and, 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 and the house was, 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 you know, had needed a lot of work on it. And um, <clears throat> But I heard him say this. He said he hoped he had done that years ago. But he let what people say about 30-year mortgages scare him into not doing it. And he said he hoped he had done that years ago and put his wife in a better home. Don't keep saying and putting off and scared of stuff and scared of everything. You can do it. You can do it. You can let your life change now. You can let your life change now. You can live in such a way you impact and change the people's lives around you. No matter what your past brought about, don't judge people now according to your past. Men, women, in relationship, don't judge that person according to someone in your past. Don't judge one people and don't allow people to judge you according to the people in their past. You can do it. We can overcome that. We can be better. We can enjoy the life that we really want to enjoy and not just settle. You can do it. We thank God for all that God is doing. I thank God for you and I thank God for what he's doing in our lives and that he's trying to bring us to a better life, a happier life, a more content life. You can, you can do it. Let's do all God would have for us to do. I thank God for you. I pray God bless you and continue to keep you. I pray that you look in the mirror and tell yourself you can do it and then do it. And then do it. Let go of what you need to let go of. The Bible said you can enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. You've had your season, now move on. That just sees them now move on. You can do it. You, it's, yeah, it's okay. You can do it. Let's move on and be all that God would have for us to be. You can do it. God bless you. I love you. I thank God for you. God loves you. And I pray that God continue to bless you and your household. And that God continue to bring us into a better place. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you. May the face of